Welcome viewers to the fresh new episode of Northeast Roundup. In the midst of advent of winter in Northeast, here is your host Shurojit Roy taking you through the latest happenings and stories across Northeast. On the 1st of December 2009, Home Minister P.U. Lalchan Lianan flagged off an Assam Rifles organized national interactive tour between 2nd December to 14th December 2019 to Delhi, Dehradun and Missouri. At a flagging of ceremony held at Assam Rifles headquarters at Aizol, the tour members comprising of 14 students and two teachers selected from far-flung areas of Mizoram as part of Assam Rifles' ongoing outreach program to foster the spirit of national integration. Here's more in this report. A national interactive tour was organized from 2nd December 2019 to 14 December 2019 by Asham Rifles to Delhi, Dehradun and Masori. The tour aims to educate and motivate youth of Mizoram and to provide an insight into the rich heritage of the country through visit to premium institutions, renowned schools and colleges, historical monuments and other important landmarks in Delhi, Dehradun and Masori. During the tour, participants will get an opportunity to interact with several prominent personalities who can positively influence their young minds and motivate them to work hard and contribute actively in the nation-building process. The students will also witness gentlemen cadets passing out parade at Indian Military Academy, Lal Bahadur Shastri IS Academy, ITBP Academy and Forest Research Institute which will provide them an insight into the various career options which lay ahead waiting for them in future. On 29th November 2019, Manipur Chief Minister Sri N. Biran Singh inaugurated the first handloom and handicraft mall of the state. Apart from unveiling a craft spiller at Wangkai Kethe Ashangbi in Imphal East District, the mall is run by Manipur Handloom and Handicrafts Development Corporation Limited. According to the CM Sri An Biran Singh, the mall will be very much beneficial as all handloom products can be found under one roof. Weavers can market their products and handlooms will be easily made available to them. Let's take a look. Handloom and handicraft sector hugely contributes to the overall growth of businesses related to micro, small and medium enterprises. In the state of Manipur, Chief Minister Sri N. Biran Singh inaugurated the first handloom and handicraft mall of the state apart from unveiling a craft pillar. In Imphal East District, the mall is run by Manipur Handloom and Handicraft Development Corporation Limited. Regarding further development of handloom sector, he said that the state government is considering to bring out a policy to replace fabrics used in stitching school uniforms with handloom fabrics. This would increase the demand of handloom fabrics, thereby creating more profits for viewers. AGI is an industry-led professional organization representing the interest of geospatial industry in India and works towards the advancement of geospatial technologies and their applications. Through the conference, AGI will bring together eminent leaders of the government, academia and the geospatial industry to help understand the potential of geospatial technologies in the development of the entire Northeast region of India. Association of Geospatial Industries, New Delhi and Department of Geography, Northeastern Hill University, Shillong, jointly organized a two-day conference on the role of geospatial technologies in the development of Northeastern region of India on 27th and 28th of November 2019. Here's more on this report. Association of Geospatial Industries, New Delhi and Department of Geography, Northeastern Hill University organized today jointly organized a two-day conference on the role of geospatial technologies in the development of northeastern region of India. Addressing the various challenges of the geospatial ecosystem in the region, the conference focused on the latest advancements made in the geospatial technologies and its advancements in various other sectors such as agriculture, water management and road construction. Etc. Speaking at the inaugural event, C.P. Marak, IFS Principal Chief Conservator of Forests, emphasized that making geospatial technologies inclusive in the state would also prevent leakages of funds and improve employment in the state. On the 1st of December 2019, it was the inaugural day of the 10-day 20th Hornbill Festival, which got underway at Naga Heritage Village of Kisama. The festival will continue till 10th of December. Let's take a look at this vibrant festival. The vibrant Hornbill Festival, named after the bird, is one of the largest celebrations 
of the indigenous warrior tribes of Nagaland in India's far northeast region. The hornbill is particularly revered by the Nagas and reflected in tribal folklore, dances and songs. The inaugural event at Naga Heritage Village Kisama near Kohima saw a total of 45,142 tourists including 407 foreign and 4,954 domestic guests gathering in the program organized by the state tourism and art and culture departments. The Hornbill Festival put on display various cultures and traditions on day one. The Hornbill Festival began with traditional blessing pronounced by Mongte of Anyashu village while Chief Host Nagaland Governor R. N. Ravi and Host Chief Minister Nefu Rayo opened festival by beating traditional gong. On the day two, besides cultural performances by various Naga tribes, the second day also witnessed many activities including kids' carnival, sporting activities, World War II rally, etc. Meghalaya celebrated its 128th Sankut Sinam Festival on Saturday. The festival kicked off with a procession which started from Madan Ring Pack and culminated at the Wicking Ground in Shillong. Tableau depicting various facets of the simple yet rich and colorful indigenous life of the tribal people were one of the major attractions of the festival. The vibrant festival saw scores of people from the Kasi tribe taking part in traditional rituals and practices. Here's more on this report. Sankutsnam is an important festival of the Kasi community in Meghalaya. It marks the day before Kasi New Year, which falls on 24th November every year. It is an occasion for the community to celebrate their culture and traditions. The Kasi calendar is based on the change of four seasons, known indigenously as Sao Samoy. Winter, spring, summer and autumn, as defined by the crops sown and harvested, and influenced by climatic changes, rain and phases of the moon. Apart from being an end of the year celebration, Sankutsnam is also a celebration of Kasi culture. Mrs. Bianglin Panbo, member Senkasi Senkmeer, describes how this day marks the various acts of defiance by the Kasi against the British Empire. By upholding their indigenous traditions and customs, the Kasi were challenging attempts of at conversion and British imperialism. Above all, the moment has helped the Kasi people take pride in their unique and rich heritage, marked by speeches, traditional games, folk dances, cultural festivals and displays of handmade products. Senkutsnam is a joyous occasion where the Kasi celebrate faith, history and their very being. World Standard Day is celebrated annually on 14th October every year. The main purpose of celebration is to make the world aware of the significance of standardization and its relevance to the economy. Bureau of Indian Standards, Kuhati branch organized a seminar on the topic Video Standards Create a Global Stage. Let's take a look at this report. Bureau of Indian Standards, Guwahati branch on the occasion of the World Standard Day organized a seminar on Video Standards Create a Global Stage on 26th November 2019. People from various industrial and other backgrounds participated in the event. Speaking on the occasion, the Chief Guest of the Functions, Dr. Gopal Das, Dean Research and Development, IIT Guwahati, spoke. And I am regretting the theme of the World Standard Day. The video as it, and the global standard is a video standard. So as Mr. Roy already mentioned you, that standard is a very important parameter for any manufacturing or any kind of industry or any event. In society also. We are celebrating the World Standards Day 2019, which is an annual event. It is an international event. And uh, BI is being the founder member of ISO and representing India in the International Forum. The onus lies on BI to celebrate this day. World Standards Day signifies uh, the importance of standards and standardization in our day-to-day -day life, uh, especially meant for the industrial sector, consumer sector and the service sector. Because in nowadays in this competitive world, without standards, standardization and quality, industry cannot survive. Unless and until the Indian manufacturers manufactures quality products uh, and exports to the international market, the economy of our country, and it's act acceptable in the international market, the economy of the country cannot grow up and our GDP cannot grow up. So standard standardization quality system holds a very significant role in the present scenario. And viewers, now is the time to unwind as we bring to you some foot tapping music from our studios. No. 
Arctic clouds in the sky Got the sun in my eyes And I won't be surprised if it's a dream Everything I want the world to be Is no coming true especially for me And the reason is clear It's because you are here You're the nearest things to heaven that I've Hope you like the presentation as much as we liked bringing it to you. Now moving on to the next story, Assam's Rangsapara village was declared Assam's cleanest village in the year 2016 and 17 by the Public Health Engineering Department. The village is under Balijana block situated about 16 km from Gwalpara town. The villagers formed a managing committee in 2009 with four resolutions, peace and unity, clean and hygiene, toilets, clean drinking water, and cleaning the village on Wednesday by men and on Saturday by women. The thought of cleanliness was imbibed in the year 1990 at the initiative of the present village headman, Robert John Momin. Let's see more in this report. From a distance, Rangsapara looks like any other village of Assam. Miles and miles of lush green paddy fields, little rivers navigating themselves, and an idyllic village life. On actual visit to this village in Gwalpara district, which is almost 160 kilometers from Guwahati, through one of the fantastic stretches of tropical dense forest on the national highway, a little diversion after a few kilometers of after Agia, one steps into this remarkable village and something strikes the view immediately. Women folk in large numbers are on the road. It is impossible to miss this view. They are in action. They are in unison. They are with a purpose. Picking up the gathering dust that has accumulated, the women work in tandem and the results are all too evident. Neatly maintained roads, garbage-free localities, impeccable surroundings and a beautiful omnipresent church to look on. Welcome to Rangsapara, Assam's cleanest village. Declared the cleanest village in the state by the Public Health Engineering Department of Assam, Rangsapara is a hundred-year-old scenic village which shot to limelight in early 2017 when it got the cleanest village tag and was awarded Rs 5 lakh. A village of 92 households with a total population of 575 and which spreads over an area of 127 hectares is engaged in this mission. On the day of our visit, there is a flutter in the village life. The Deputy Commissioner of the District is visiting to reaffirm the administration's continued support to the villagers' stride for sustaining a clean environment. A heavy downpour doesn't dilute the enthusiasm of the men and women who gathered on the occasion, as little saplings get into tender hands to possibly nurture into full-blown trees in the near future. I feel that it is because of the people's concept which is very deeply ingrained of cleanliness which is why uh, the village has come up in such a beautiful manner. Beginning from 1990, this village, predominantly inhabited by Garo tribes of people, is conscious of their role in keeping their villages clean. Buoyed by the success of its stride towards ODF, the movement began to gather steam in the late 90s and early 2000. <laughs> A neatly graveled path leads us to the village heartland. Every house is mandated to keep a garden. 
well developed and neatly maintained, one can understand the involvement of the people at every level of village existence. There are green fields all around Rangsapara. Paddy is the main crop grown here. A significant portion of the village area has come under rubber plantations, the output of which is taken to the nearest market at Agia, bringing handsome prices and contributing to the economic fortunes of the villagers. From the past to the present, the journey of Rangsapara is the journey of the people's movement for cleanliness. And there is no stopping this movement. It is hoped that this initiative, based on community involvement, takes further roots and contributes to a cleaner and greener India. The International Craft Exchange Program between India and Bhutan on bamboo crafts began on 19 November at Agartala this year and came to an end on November 29. The exchange program has come up under the Northeast Region Textile Promotion Scheme, focusing mainly to provide a trust to exports of Indian handicrafts and opportunity to the craft persons and entrepreneurs to interact with the national and international visitors. Let's have a look at this report. The Deputy Chief Minister of Tripura, Jishnu Dev Verma, has attended the last session of the exchange program on November 29th and addressed the gathering of artisans from Bhutan and others. The Deputy Chief Minister, Jishnu Dev Verma, has attended the exchange program and took a note of the activities of Bamboo Craft, Making in Bamboo and Keen Development Institute at Agartala, where the local artisans have showcased their skill in making different crafts which highlights the cultural heritage of the state of Tripura. Tripura is known for its elegant cane and bamboo handicrafts with beautiful weaving and attractive designs. The styles are unique and are practiced by different tribes and communities belonging to the area. Viewers, as it is customary to end the program with an audiovisual treat, we would like to take you to a picturesque location with this beautiful number called Ram Denu. सुकुले साले ओ भी मानी जन लगे हो दू भोरी दू भोरी राखी तू मी काने काने को थकोले तेजे तेजे बोया है नोई नामी आहा बोरो खाहोई बुकुरे माज लोई लाहे लाहे कोई आहा बोनो लोई बुकु ते राम धेन रोखा दिलो Kiri ki khuli, suwa hi juni, kita pilo inu a jibono loi. Ni mi khote ro, ya hasa ya hoy, ya he na he di de di de di de di de ko. Ah, 
So viewers, we hope you like the program. And with romance in the air, we end the episode with a promise of coming to you every week with lots more about Northeast. Till then, bye-bye and do take good care of yourself. Mm -hmm.